Welcome to Illo Talk. I am Corey. We interrupt your regularly scheduled broadcast to bring you this message. Social media has informed me that today is my birthday, which is cool. Um, so I'm older now, and you guys don't have to get me anything. Don't feel obligated at all. Um, but if you want to get yourself something, you can buy something from my store. That's always cool. Um, if you don't want to spend any money, share some of my stuff on social media. Go find some artwork that you like that I did and share it with people or a video or whatever. Um, if you do want to get me something, you can always go to coreykerr.com slash wish list. And there's some things that I need and some things that I want. Anyway, back to the video. All right. So I want to talk about comfort is death. And uh, I don't mean to be dramatic because you're not actually going to die. But comfortable is the absolute last thing that you want to be. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Welcome to Illo Talk. I am Corey Kerr, and this is day 72 of 100 Days of Animation, where I spend several hours trying to figure something out that I didn't know how to do and screwing it up anyway. That's what happened tonight. But I'll figure it out. I think I know what went wrong, but basically trying to do some like shape tweens, and I've, I've actually learned that that's not the term you use for illust or After Effects. And I watched a tutorial or a series, I watched like 20 tutorials, probably more like 10. Anyway, for about an hour trying to figure this out. And then I tried it and I got this, which I will show you during the intro music. Yeah, so, that wasn't great. Um, and you can watch me do it. I guess don't do it like this. I don't know. I'm not sure what to show you while I talk. But uh, that's kind of what happened tonight. Uh, so basically what I did is I created the shapes in Illustrator and then copied and pasted those paths into the mask layer on the path, the path of the mask layer in After Effects um, at different points in time that created a new keyframe. And uh, then for some reason it started doing acrobatics and flipping and reversing and things. And uh, I don't know how to fix it. So I think actually I have a better idea that I'm gonna try tomorrow. Um, but in the meantime, I do want to talk about something. So while you're watching this stuff, here we go. Now, when I say comfort is death, what I'm talking about is um, feeling comfortable and, and avoiding leaving your comfort zone. Like we hear this whole idea of like comfort zones a lot, right? We, we, we hear like, oh, I don't know, I should leave my comfort zone. I want to talk about that for a minute. So I think I've mentioned this book before, The Icarus Deception by Seth Godin. It's, uh, it's a great book and it's about art. Um, and he talks about how it used to be that the safety zone and the comfort zone were relatively the same, right? And the reason that you felt comfortable, uncomfortable, was because you were unsafe, right? But now the safety zone and the comfort zone have like switched so that most of the time that you feel comfortable, you are actually unsafe. Um, let me give you, let me give you an example. So way, way, way back in the day, right? Hundreds, thousands of years ago, if you felt uncomfortable, it was because you were at risk. Outside of your comfort zone was fear of dismemberment or looking foolish, which, you know, could get you killed by the king or the monarch or whatever at the time. Um, there are wild animals, there's starvation, there's lots of things out there that could end you, right? And uh, being comfortable was something that was kind of uncommon for most of humanity, but also was an important feeling to let you know you this is the right place to be, right? And so taking risks back in the day was not great. Um, taking risks usually didn't turn out well. Okay, fast forward to 
the modern era, there are unfortunately still people on the planet that live like that. But for most of us, um, or many of us, there the safety zone has moved in that if you feel comfortable, you're not taking risks. And if you're not taking risks, then what you're actually doing is you are not growing, progressing, learning, getting better, or improving. And if you're not doing any of those things, you are actually significantly in danger. Not in danger of dying or being dismembered or being killed by the king, um, but you are actually in danger of stagnating. And if you stagnate, then um, you're dead, right? You're dead in the water. As an artist, as soon as you decide, I'm good, this is it. I found my groove. I'm gonna be in this groove. I'm not gonna change a thing because I like it. It's comfortable. I live where I am. I'm not gonna stretch or progress or grow or admit that you know there's something that I could do that could be better or improved or whatnot. I'm just I'm just gonna live right here. I like right here, right? That is stagnation. That is death. You will become outdated, and I think your work will not plateau because I don't think plateaus are possible. I think it will degrade. Um, anyway, that's, that's that. Now, if you step outside of your comfort zone, you're not going to die. You will feel uncomfortable. It's not going to kill you though. And the interesting thing about it is that what you have outside of your comfort zone is you have risk and vulnerability and risk and vulnerability are the two things that create good opportunity and good art. And so I don't mean that I want you to make yourself vulnerable to harm, uh, either physically or emotionally, but um, that you risk something, that you go out there and you say, you know what? I'm going to take this risk. I'm going to put myself out there, step out into the darkness and hope that the light follows me. And I'm going to make a change. I'm going to improve. I'm going to see and show and go, okay, so I'm not good at X, right? I'm not good at doing this. And so I'm going to get better at that. And I'm going to show my work publicly. And in doing that, you're actually taking a significant risk. Okay. Hundreds of years ago, uh, failing publicly was, was suicide, you know, in certain professions, in certain areas of the world and whatnot. And nowadays, we kind of have a giant safety net in that it has become okay to fail publicly. In fact, um, in this book, The Icarus Deception, uh, Godin points out that not only is it okay, it humanizes you. And so when you go out there and you say, um, all right, so I'm going to do this, and then you fail at it, and you say, okay, that didn't work, and this is what I've learned. Um, people can look at that and, and identify with that and go, yeah, I've, I've been there. Um, so anyway, be uncomfortable. Go step outside of your comfort zone. And I don't mean that like in the trite way of like, do something new and cool. But what I mean is like, is like dig deep and improve. And it's kind of like, it's kind of like if you have a wound, right? Think of, think of, think of your art as your body. And if you've got, um, if you've got like a broken bone or a wound that has become infected or something like that, um, it's not going to be comfortable to fix it, right? You're going to have to go through some pain to fix it. You're going to go have to go through some, you know, kind of uh, shove some gunpowder in there and light it on fire to burn out the infection, you know, or some sort of surgery or set the bone or something like that. Um, if you've got something wrong in your body, like a tumor or something like that, they don't like give you ice cream and have you sit and watch TV. Like being happy and comfortable is going to is going to solve this problem. You know what they do? They cut you open. They shoot you with lasers. They inject you with poison um, to try to kill it and burn it and cut it out. And there's some pain involved in that. And there's some risk involved in that. But at the end of that, the tumor's gone. And if you can relate that to your art or your work or your whatever it is that you're trying to do, and you say, like me, 
I'm working on anatomy, right? And so I'm drawing people and I'm trying to get better at it and I'm, I'm not there yet. And it's kind of painful and it's rough to get critique from people that know what they're doing and, uh, and for them to kind of tear you down over and over again and to look at, to look at what you've made and to look at it and just say, I know that's not good. Like, I know that that could be better. Like that's, that's hard and that's painful and that is frustrating. Um, and then sometimes you have a little bit of progress and then the next time you do it, it's like that progress isn't there. And there's, there's just a series of failures. And, and that's at the end of that, that cutting, lasering, poison injection, painful healing process. At the end of that, you come out and the tumor is gone and you've learned how to draw, you know, the human elbow or something, you know, whatever you, your focused effort, you know, has gone towards has helped you uh, done that, even though it was painful and it was uncomfortable and admitting to yourself that you weren't good at it um, wasn't fun. It's worth it. And it goes towards helping you improve and get better and get healthy. Right? So I actually don't like this idea of like, there's that idea of like fail early and fail often. Um, because I don't think you should seek failure. Um, but I do like the idea of looking at failure differently. Instead of saying that you failed, um, consider that an iteration in the process. And so to get to the end, for example, tonight, I quote unquote wasted um, several hours trying to figure out how to do this, right? There are multiple paths that I could have gone down. I picked one of them. I went down that path and I have I know clearly now that is not the path I should go down. Um, now, I wish that I just happened to choose the right path right off the bat. That would have been awesome. But that's not how this is going to work. Um, especially with things where you're self-taught or whatever. But even, even things that you're being taught by somebody else, there's still the discovery of it. There's still the, you know, the, the gestalt moment, the, the aha moment. Uh, that they say where where things kind of click into place in your mind and and no one can give you that no one can teach you that mind clicking that that kind of meshing of ideas where it's like oh I get it now right and so you have to have that moment yourself and so um, yes I have completely failed miserably at doing this if you look at what I'm doing as a snapshot, right? And so if you take this moment right now as a snapshot, it's a failure. But if you don't look at it as a snapshot and you look at it as a movie, one single frame in the movie, I'm in the process of progressing towards something and it is an iteration of that, right? I've iterated, I've, I've made something, I'm gonna make something again, slightly different version or slight, slightly different way and I'm gonna keep iterating and keep making it a little bit differently, keep trying different things until I get to the end and the end will be successful. It will be successful not because I'm super intelligent, um, or because I magically have some sort of conduit to, um, you know, the group think, uh, whatever cultural knowledge base of animation or whatever, um, it will be successful because I refuse to admit that I have failed as much as I view that temporary snapshot of failure as an iteration in the process, which means that I won't stop until I figure out how to do this. And I don't know how long that will take me. That's why it's a little hard to gauge, um, you know, projects on a new venture. I don't know how long it will take me to figure that out. I think I can figure it out tomorrow. I have a pretty decent idea of what I want to do and I think it'll work, but I felt that way before I started this one today. And so I don't know, but in any case, um, I just wanted to spend just a few minutes talking about that. So to recap, uh, feeling comfortable equals the death of growth, the death of your creativity and the death of your artistic voice. Don't feel comfortable. Comfortable is bad. Comfortable is evil. When you feel comfortable, it should give you anxiety because you, you, you're you not aware of what's going on, right? If you're like, oh man, I've I felt comfortable lately, you should be like, oh crap, what is it that I'm doing wrong, right? Because comfortable is bad comfortable is evil. Second thing that I wanted to go over tonight that I did, 
is uh, failure if you view it as an iteration, uh, one single frame in a feature film rather than the end all of everything. Um, failures are better viewed as iterations than they are as failures because a failure means that you've stopped. It means that you are done and that is the end result of that thing. You have failed. Thus, it's been labeled, packaged, put away, and it's done, right? But if you come to me in the middle of something, if I'm in the middle of cooking a meal, and you taste raw chicken and, uh, and whatever it is that I'm doing, you say, oh, that tastes gross, you've failed. It's like, well, you can't call it yet. I'm not done. You've just come in and randomly taken a snapshot of my process. I'm in the middle of a process right here. And so if you view those snapshot failures as iterations as part of the process, then mentally it's actually quite a bit easier. It doesn't mean that it's like totally comfortable. It's still uncomfortable, um, but it's not devastating. So, so there's that. Anyway, you can catch my stuff at CoreyKerr.com. Um, all of my social media links are in the description of this video. Hit me up on Twitter and uh, Instagram and whatnot. And uh, yeah, that'd be great. That'll be awesome. I will catch you guys later. I'm out. <laughs> Okay, this just in. I think I actually figured it out. I figured out what I did wrong. I don't think I'm gonna do it this way though. But when you look at what I'm doing here, um, what I had done wrong before was I think After Effects tracks the first anchor point that you create in Adobe Illustrator um, and that becomes some sort of orientation of which direction you draw that path. And so, this time around, what I actually did was each time from frame to frame that I drew, I started at the same point. I started in the left-hand corner, kind of the point of origin of the smoke, and then I went along the top and then down and then left along the bottom. And since I did that the same way each time, um, it seems to be tweening and not flipping itself over and over and over again. And so what, what seemed logical to me, which was like, keep the top on the top, that's not what the computer is doing. The computer is trying to figure out, okay, he started at that point and then he went this direction. So all of those things must relate to the ones that he did before. And so, whereas before I was just kind of randomly drawing it, I wasn't paying attention to whether I was going clockwise or counterclockwise. This time I always went clockwise and I always started in the lower left-hand corner and finished in the lower left-hand corner. And it seems to have worked, except right at the end where I started adjusting some things and moving it around, and it crashed. Um, and I had to move it around because it seems to be pasting the vector not from where it is on my artboard, but it's pasting it directly to the center of the either the view or the, the frame. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, what it's doing. So I went through and I just did a little bit of an adjustment there and I, it was too much for the computer and it crashed. But I figured it out and it was only about 10 minutes worth of work. And so to get it down to be re like really, really good, um, I don't think it'll take me that long it, doing it this way. But I've actually thought something through and I think I want to do something slightly differently. And so um, along those lines, this is interesting and will help me in the future, but this isn't the way that I'm gonna make the smoke. But I thought you might like it until it crashes. <laughs>